Andrew McGahan for the MacLife.com here in SBG HQ, standing alongside Gunnar Nelson. Although he doesn't have a fight currently booked, you're in Ireland. So usually when you're in Ireland, that means something something is afoot. First of all, you've got a squad of kids here. Can we talk about them first? Because I can remember when I interviewed you years ago, you told me about this kid, Bjarki, who had only made his amateur debut at the time, and I think he made it in Ireland. And it seems like you have a real affinity and a real, uh, it's like he is your dad, or you're his dad in this case. Yeah, yeah, he's here with me, the kid. Uh, he's really good. Uh, he's uh, had his first pro fight now, and he won. And he's always training, and I look forward to seeing into his near future. You know, is it a little bit surreal for you, as someone who went on his own martial arts journey and effectively led by example in Reykjavik and in Iceland and in Molnar, to see these guys now progressing through the amateur and professional ranks and doing as well as they're doing? Yeah, it's it's so great to see all these guys because. I mean, MMA is so young in Iceland, and uh, like you said, I'm, I'm kind of the first to take like the big step, although Arne Isakson was kind of the first pro, um, but then from there, a lot of the guys are coming up now, and, and we'll see like in the near future a lot of good guys coming up from, from Iceland, and obviously these are, are some of the top guys now, you know, and it's, it, it's exciting times. It's very different from when I started. Now I actually have like training partners and, uh, and there's some life in MMA back home, you know. So it's not a rite of passage that if you're a young Icelandic fighter you need to come to SBG Ireland and train under John Cavanagh. They're not being put through some ritual here, are they? No, they, they, well, they love to come here and we're always going to bring guys here and it's always beneficial to come here and train abroad, you know. So there's always been such a strong connection uh, between the, the gyms that that's, I mean, I, I look at it as the same gym, really. We've been a team since I was 17, so I, that's not going to change. You have taken a good bit of time off since your last loss, your first knockout loss in mixed martial arts. Um, I know that you've talked so much about the eye pokes in relation, but the one thing that I want to ask you about that is, do you hope that what happened to you in that fight could maybe be the start of a change that we could see in the rules of mixed martial arts? Because I'm understood that if you get poked in the eye, you don't get a five minute break. If you get hit in the groin, you get a five minute break. But you weren't able to signal to the referee at any point to say that there could have been something up with your vision because that's not a foul that the sport could be stopped in. Do you see a change being made to the rules that would be beneficial for uh, situations like that in the future? Yeah, they definitely need to, to find something, sort something out there because this is like, if you like the way I got poked, when you see like you're seeing double in your death reception, your your distance judging and everything is out the window. I think definitely you need you need time until your eyes recover. And, uh, I remember the last thing that the referee said to me before I walked out was like, you never stop your hand or I'll, I'll keep an eye on any fouls and I'll, I'll be the one stopping the fight. Needs to so like they you need the referees definitely need to be on top of this and um, this case was was a bad one and I hope it's it'll be an example for for future cases and and that people don't are not gonna be in in my situation you know. You seem to be very much an advocate of there's no point in wasting ener energy on something if it's already happened. Yeah. Simply move forward and get over it. What did you do in that time to move forward and to get over it? Have you just been enjoying your training, focusing on building the new gym? What has been up with Gunnar Nelson since then? Yeah, just just same as always. Just went back home, you know, and obviously you, you need to take some time off. Uh, hard training, but always training. And, and I've been training for a long time now and uh, focusing on focusing on what's to come and, and focusing on crafting skills and, you know, and the new gym, of course, the, the team and everything, you know, my family, it's just shit carries on and I'm not really thinking about this. It seemed like we were going to see Gunnar Nelson announced for a return to action sooner rather than later. Uh, you were campaigning for a spot on UFC London. The UFC even offered you the fight versus Darren Till. For you, who is a guy who's fought so many of his fights in Europe, was it frustrating for that fight to fall through, regardless of the location or the opponent, but surely to right the wrong of last summer, you wanted to get in there quickly? Yeah, you know, it would have been a great, great night, you know, and I, I, I thought it was going to happen, but then it didn't happen, and, and again, that's just water under the bridge, whatever, it's it's done now. Um, but I'm looking, uh, 
hopefully there's been some uh, rumors of a card in Dublin in May, and I'm definitely excited. Uh, I think uh, I think I'll be offered a spot in that card for sure. Funny you mention it. As you've been training, it's been confirmed. So the UFC have confirmed yeah. the tw Sunday, the 29th of Mar of May. Uh, it's going to be a Fox Sports One card, and it'll be on a Sunday, which is a little bit different than what we're used to over here. But surely, surely, surely after offering you a headline at UFC London, that Gunnar Nelson headlining UFC Dublin is a no-brainer now. Mm -hmm. Especially the, the other cards in particular that didn't have an Irish interest as the card went further on. The energy dropped in that arena. And we know what the Irish fans are capable of when they have someone to get behind. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's going to happen. Um, you know, there's nothing, nothing yet. Obviously, it's just been announced, but we'll probably see in the near future. And I, uh, I sure hope I'll be on that card. There was a video done of you in 2012 by Stuart Cooper. I think you were doing a seminar in the UK at the time. And you said that one of your best performances ever in any sort of combat sports came in the ADCC 2009, the second day when you were doing the absolute, because you had an ice cream for breakfast that morning. Now, I don't think it was the ice cream that did it for you. I beers the night before. I don't think it was the ice cream or the beers that did it for you. You stated that it was because you had gotten so calm, because there was no pressure on you. And it seemed like that lesson you learned before your pro career even really took off has helped you from there on because I've never seen you outside of this mood that you're currently in now. <laughs> yeah, it, it just made me realize that things don't have to be exactly like this. You know, you don't have to eat this, this and this and you don't have to do a ritual before going in. Where Like I was just there, like you said, ice cream for breakfast. We went out the day before, pretty much, like not crazy, but we did go out and I felt a bit hungover when I woke up and then all of a sudden my name is shouted and I'm like in the audience, like going, what? All right. And then I just walk in and, you know, I had a really good performance. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it just shows you that it's, it's more, it's more in your head. It's more how you, what you take in there with you up here, you know, that matters and than a ritual that has to be like this, 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 this. Because a lot of times you can't even control that. Things go, things go this way or this way, it's out of your control. And for some guys that will really take them off their game, but I'm just, fuck, fuck all that, you know. It doesn't matter what happens, fight, fight week, whatever, what happens, it's just, it's out of my hands a lot of times. And I'm just going in there and doing my thing, you know. You actually said in that same piece, um, I think it was something to do with with competing or nerves or maybe even um, how you were going to deal with things and you said you didn't know where you were going to be in five years time Now that video was just over five years old you said you're either going to be fighting at a higher level either the UFC or Strike Force or a promotion like that or you'll just be doing nothing mm -hmm. and it's been commonly said amongst the SVG fighters here that they don't know what would happen with you after a loss you could either come back and train a hundred percent or you'd be happy to go and live in the woods uh, somewhere in Iceland but did that come, come into your head at all after the last loss you know was there a th time that thought like let's just enjoy training we don't have to go through that again or was it fairly shortly afterwards you're like I need to get that back I need to get back into the win column yeah no that's that's a you know that's a part of the journey you you I'm a I'm a real martial artist. I'm a real craftsman, and and taking a loss is, it's always sore, but it's not gonna be something that ends my career, ends me as a martial artist. It's far from, couldn't be further from. It's something that you learn from, and uh, it's a uh, mistakes or can be a gift that y you can just craft into something like very very powerful. And that's how I look at it. You know, every experience can be used to 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 you to benefit you you know and that this, that's this is just part of life you know and i'll take it on the chest and move on you know you said um and i'm terribly sorry for this but you said that you're a true martial artist someone else who was also a true martial artist one of your early coaches carl tanswell who recently passed away you're not a very um i don't know you personally but i don't you don't strike me as the religious type but it seems like he had a big influence on you in your early career and you will carry that into the cage with you every time you compete from here on out yeah yeah carl was a really good man he was um i lived with him for for a long long time went back there over and over again and he taught me a lot and uh, we were still good friends um, like i was always in touch with him and he came to iceland to help me prepare for the rotterdam fight for an example and um he was re he loved his fighters and and his fighters and his family was everything to him um and he he'll be sorely missed you know 
I'm actually going over to his funeral. And yeah, I'm, uh, it's very uh, devastating to lose him, and, but his memories will stay with us uh, forever. And then to finish, I suppose, if the UFC Dublin does come true and this headline or co-headline or any sort of spot on it happens, is 2018 going to be the most active year that we've seen Gunnar Nelson in the UFC? Or what are your long-term goals even for that division? Because welterweight at the moment seems like it's primed and ready for somebody, maybe even yourself, to re-announce themselves and get back into the top 10, top 5 title shot. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, Well, right now, looking at that Dublin card, that's what I'm aiming for. Keep training, and then we move on from there. From there, and but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not slowing down, not one bit. Perfect. Gunner, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.